Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this video, I'm going to have a, a bit of a study of this uh, artworks by Mr. Tatsuo Miyajima. Um, I happen um, every now and then I I like to go to like a museum or exhibition and look at for some artworks that might be inspiring for me. Like thinking to maybe. Uh, maybe I could recreate this using <clears throat> Blender. Um, it's a it's pretty fun exercise and kind of uh, make you think a little bit as well. And so there is this exhibition at the Sydney MCA Museum of Contemporary Art the other day, and I went there and then have a look at the exhibitions. So this is the work by Tatsuo Miyajima. It's a <clears throat> It's a kind of like a light installation. It's a it's an LED kind of uh, installation. I thought that some of them are. And it's kind of um, it looks really simple. It's basically um, he has this um, you can call like obsession with number. It's a digit number, zero to nine. It's actually very very basic and simple. I think, uh, but. His idea is uh, these three, three principles, like uh, the first one is like uh, always changing and then the second one is uh, connected with everything and then the third one is like, uh, what is it, um, continuous continuous movement or co continuously moving. It's a, his art, he says, is more like a kind of like thinking about life and death but using number. Uh, they are pretty simplistic. Uh, I'm not like an engineering or scientist. I'm I'm not an engineer. I don't I don't deal with this kind of hardware. I use computer mostly, and then all the things I made is all on the computer. Maybe just like most of you guys, uh, would be nice sometimes to you know. Um, I I did play around with the like Arduino, kind of like a you can turn on light and on and off using programming it's a it's a neat thing actually I kind of wish that sometimes it's, a, it's all about the access if you have all the device and then you have it on your hand and you can probably control all this kind of thing using um, using blender <coughs> maybe even node base um, blender sushi is all about um, live noting I think so even this is a this is his work called a mega death it's a uh, just a bunch of LED turning on and off and sometimes the LED goes down it's they say, he said it's like a population of the world has keep changing in the, in the in the last century or something and there is this one that looks like a mirror but there's all this bunch of numbers the numbers is actually always going down from 9 to 0 and then he said 0 is representing kind of like death like emptiness and it's a there's like a long converse, um like long interview he's talking about um n number and digit but he also said like zero if you're zero zero means empty or like a uh, uh but also can mean zero is can means uh like an explosion that's what he said because zero means like a blank paper right you, it's a uh, it's uh, something meaning to happen, you know, something meaning to rebirth or something. I don't know. He's uh, bas but basically, um, I think he he's probably fond of this electronic stuff, and the the thing that's make it um, fascinating is probably the because with art installations, people can kind of interact with it. They can take picture of it. They can take picture with the art, and. Um, Miyajima say Miyajima san said um, if an audience looking at your art is uh, the art by the artist is the uh, is the audience is looking at the art inside his, himself or herself so yeah um, art you know some people hate it some uh, art can make you think at least uh, I like the art kind of that's uh, more interactive so I'm maybe I'm going towards that idea you know making art but maybe in in the 3d realms um, we have soon VR virtual reality and AR becoming more prevalent for like a general public so people will get used to using VR and AR in real life so 
I think um, making arts uh, that's uh, like virtual, but it, it, it can do something more. But yeah, anyway, I'll try to recreate this um, using animation nodes actually. So the idea is, you know, just get a font with the digit numbers and just try to recreate some of this. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, see this like a number digits underwater. That's a, it's very simple, but because the way he plays it, he also have like number digits under the pile of coals. And then this, this he plays a number digit on the, on the bubble glass and then he puts it in the water and then the water is keep moving. Um, and okay, this, there is this one, this is like the projected numbers. Uh, I suppose people think you can interact with it, but I, I tried it. It's not interactive. I wish it's more interactive because it's uh, projected and there's uh, these numbers floating. This is kind of thing that uh, I think we can recreate using animation nodes. It's, um, it's fairly basic, you know, and the idea is, you know, just a number that keeps changing randomly or things like that. We will, we will see. Um, file, save as. Animation notes. Tatsu Miyajima. I will improvise today. I don't know what's where we're gonna go with this. Um, I will work in the cycles. Mm. Yeah, I think cycles alright. And then switch to compositing real quick. Animation notes on and turn off auto always and then turn on those three okay what should we do with this um uh, numbers numbers we have characters digits um yeah we have this digit that we can use um so digit is all characters yeah all, all the all the numbers in the font we can use that or just like a just use a normal kind of a numbers frame that we can repeat like um let's say frame you know frame numbers if we debug the frame numbers it will it will goes it will follows the number of uh whatever we put a this a timeline tick it will follow but if we use math and use a modulo and make this to 9 we can we can have like a repeat so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 oh we missed the okay the modulo should be 10 9 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 so this is it becoming a repeating number so this is two kind of a uh, data we can work on with a um, with Miyajima, he actually make the number goes from nine to zero, and then, and maybe kind of stop at zero. Sometimes it's interesting um, with the numbers. Uh, I don't know if you're into number and patterns like me, um, so, um, but let's see if we if you use this for example, and then we have a numbers here, and then the numbers kind of subtracting uh, subtract number so we have, we have number from 0 to 9 but we want to kind of reverse that maybe we have number that goes from 9 to 0 now 10 9 okay we don't want 10 so 9 here 0 9 8 7 6 5 4 back to 0 so we have already three numbers um, three data you know data source we can just plug in just like um kind of i uh the thing with the uh, artist is the if i look look out uh, look out for art exhibitions and i look for artists that's a kind of a resonance with what i've uh with with, with myself for inspirations it's kind of okay this artist is kind of similar to my work so i can kind of learn something you know maybe improve uh, 
of course you also look for other works that's uh, not so similar to your works maybe it's you can kind of uh, play around with the idea so we have this uh with the digit it's not just a single number uh, we kind of need to break it down so we can we can use random for example random number and the digit is a list of number um, we need so we need to kind of a separate uh, get list element here so the list is the digit aha uh -huh, it doesn't doesn't quite work unless uh, I separate it um, text split split text or split text yes this is the text and split by characters or uh, lines what characters I think characters <coughs> Okay, let's check it out now. Um, let's debug this. All right, this one seems to work. Um, <clears throat> you see what's happening here? We have this uh, all the digits of the characters, zero to nine, but we split it uh, using uh, this node. I think maybe n characters also. We can use um, yeah, n characters or characters. Anyway, characters will work. Now, by separating this data, we can have we can now have can have a list list of uh, numbers like that, zero to nine. Now, from that list, we can get list element between 0 and 9 and using that we can randomize the number so the seed can be okay here I'm using the node called random number I can use a frame number and then the mean and max should be between I think 0 and 9 and the number can be plugged into the index and now by some kind of magic whenever I update the time it will change um maybe i need to ensure that i don't get a number that's like kind of 10 uh, i will floor this number so there you go so um, this might be confusing for you but for us some of you i know it's just this is actually pretty basic so this one is random number, this one is a number that goes from 0 to 9 repeating and this one goes from 9 to 0 repeating. So this is three possibilities, okay? Um, here, this guy will place it on the top. It's fairly simple. It's a... Uh, you might also want a number that's kind of floating, floating up, floating up and down like that. What's interesting is uh, with the number you can kind of uh, goes beyond and then you can clamp the number. By clamping the number you kind of uh, put the number into hold. The number kind of static. Maybe like number goes from 0 to 9 and then it goes over and then but you clamp the number. So the number goes in hold at 9 or hold at 0. Uh, it's a uh, it's a way of uh, thinking of number pattern, but yeah, I think we have now we have uh, these numbers. We can work on it. Um, let's create a text. Really, uh, from this uh, kind of abstract numbers, we can just pipe it into into this text object, of course. Let let's test it real quick. Uh, text object output. Select our text and pipe in the number. It should just work because um, this animation now is doing a lot of clever thing underneath. So there we go. That's uh, our digit number. And then if I play back our frame, this one kind of a random number. And then this one, okay, this is doing a number that goes from 0 to 9. And the other one. 
920. Uh, yeah, three options we can choose there. So I'm making me want, it makes me wonder oh, maybe we could uh, kind of switch it. Ah, okay, the switch. Uh, Switch is an interesting one. So we can we have three numbers here, three numbers with different pattern. We can use switch and tell it so okay, for you use this number, this number pattern, and the second one use this number pattern. You can actually create something like that by piggybacking this thing. Um, I might touch that in a little, in a little bit. Um, let me think. Uh, what should I do next? Okay, with Miyajima works. Um, he also he also works with a pattern. But uh, first of all, the the text font that he used is not the normal font. He he used the digit number. Um, you can just find a like a digit digit typeface. Um, let's, see. let's Google digit typeface. It's a very old school kind of digital typeface where each uh, of these can be represented as a LED light. Or something like that. I'll just grab one of them, the one that's uh, free to use. Uh, I think I already did it. Um, let's have a look. I save it here. DS Digital and get the bold one, maybe, or the normal one. Okay. There's a digit number. Um, this number is floating number. Uh, I should convert it to integer first. Float to integer. So all this number. So it's now our number becoming. It doesn't have a point zero at the end. So let's do that real quick. Yeah, number goes pretty fast, but you can slow it down, of course, by um, maybe controlling this. But I think leave it. I leave it like that for now. It's okay. Um, maybe what's the next thing I should do? Maybe to create some kind of a instance of this text objects because we only have one, and uh, one is not so interesting let's create an instance object instancer let's grab this uh, text object um, or we don't actually need to grab it but uh, um, yeah maybe we start from nothing like a empty text container let's make a bunch of it and then let's loop this text Look through objects, and now we can pipe in the number. The number is one of these. Let's use the random number. Plug it into the loop. New parameter, um, integer. Or text. It's actually a string. So plug the string into that thing, and by doing that, we have access into that string inside the loop. So inside the loop, we just use this text object input. So for each text object's container, we use the string. Uh, let's use object transform output. And randomize the position of our LED. Random number. 
oops, actually not random number, it's a random vector. Plug that in, plug that in, and scale. Yeah, you can see the the font. <coughs> the font is not the digit. This is the master font, uh, but the rest of them is not. It's not doing it. So I go to this guy, this node, and then there's a font here. Text size extrude font. Turn on the font. Just say yes, digital. Now. We have this font that uh, Mr. Miyajima loves. Hide the master. Currently, all the times, uh, it's all doing the same thing. That's not that's not what we want, though. Um, so this is when the thing things get a uh, kind of interesting right here. Uh, here uh, we have the list, and then we have get list element here we actually want to get list get list element inside the loop so we can we can randomize it that way so the text list here is what we want so delete this and then create a text uh, string list and let's plug in the this text list into that guy and a get list element we can just copy that Place it there, and then uh, our where is our random uh, random number math floor. Copy that. This is this is the process of creating this kind of um, setup. Is actually I found it more interesting sometimes than the actual final result. The final outcome, yes, should be interesting enough for audience, but the process is. Um, more it has more of the the meat okay so random numbers this is the objects so okay we have the number string list here that we can we can plug in uh, so the string list I plug it into the loop iteration it's the wrong thing I guess in this case I want it to be as a parameter so Again, another modifications. Text list plug into the string list. So I will explain once again. We have a number of ten or number of inst instances here, instance of uh, empty text objects, and then we have the data coming in as a string list. String list goes into this guy, and then the and then with the index goes into the random we can use this random number to pick the string list and then the result goes into the text and voila voila that's the magic happenings now we have a random number for our digit um, obviously we can we want the number, it's not static, <coughs> it should always keep moving, animating, changing the, the digit, so we can, <coughs> let's see, uh, use a math, and add it to this guy, and then now if we changing the number, the digits changing randomly, this is the, the random one, so maybe I should make a note, Because this is a inspired by Tetsuo Miyajima artist. Um, his philosophy keep changing, like life, like life itself, keep changing, continuously moving, connected with if connect with everything you like the LED numbers digits 0 to 9 okay
it plays with colors. So we have numbers that goes from zero to nine. We have number that goes from nine to zero, and then we have random number. If I'm not wrong, animation node also have uh, this randomized text. So, believe it or not, our effort is actually kind of uh, this difficult effort to make all this is actually we don't need to do that because there is a, a node here that's uh, already doing it. If you want, this one can be anything. Maybe it doesn't have to be a digit. You don't even need to type it in. Uh, you can say A, B, C, you know, and then you want to, instead of the random digit, you want a random of the A, B, C. You can do that really easily, almost without effort. Let me turn off the parent relationship uh, display relationship lines. You might notice that this uh, the ABC is actually this is kind of design, a uh, different kind of design here. This is more like um, if you have like a protein number and GTAC, I think. I can't remember it's a part of DNA, but you want to randomize the that thing you can do it this way see each instance have a different one it might be for another uh, for next time but if you want to separate it you can split the lines just like outside here yeah, split split text that's what you want so either way um, Either way, you can just use the one that we set up earlier. So random numbers. Okay, that's a. You can have more or less. Let's say you want a 100 digit number. That's no problem. If you want the digit number to be more in a in a certain arrangement, so the arrangement of this is important instead of a random vector you can plug in something that's more like a grid and for the grid pattern we need to have a grid template which is a plane or grid grid mesh because grid, grid mesh will output these vertices that we can use inside the loop so have a vector list here and plug that in Let's say five by fives. We need twenty. Uh, we're gonna have twenty-five positions that we can just use. And now it's becoming a grid. Let me adjust it slightly. And um, let's see. Five by five is twenty-five, or maybe make it twenty by five. So it's one hundred. So we have the digit. So like. I think uh, Miyajima-san artwork is just a, like a perfect example to study about numbers and pattern and how it can be recreated for anime uh, using animation nodes in Blender. I think it's a perfect example. I don't know. Um, I can now, you know, this is almost pretty much complete what I want to show you today. Um, I'll just uh, decorate this a little bit, you know, you know, give it a little bit of uh, color and because these cycles, you can turn every LED into uh, into a light, okay? So, as, as, uh, this is the panel 
for the cycles for, at the moment if I I just give a material maybe like a gray in for the, the panel and if I turn on it the cycle render so we have something like this it's a fairly interesting not too much not too interesting if unless I turn every each and every numbers into a light and with different color then it's, uh, it's starting to get more interesting so let's stop the rendering let's assign the materials to this object material um, actually the way to do it mm. This is when things, uh, instead of using the object instancer as a blank objects, maybe we need to just source a text object with a material already, and just uh, grab this thing, uh, copy from source, get that object, and full copy. Copy full objects and deep copy, and then uh, update it. Let's zero these objects and then uh, reset the instancer. Reset source data. Uh, actually, with the size, we can control it right here. Okay. Um, that's fine. The, the position moves slightly, but it's, that's okay. Uh, now, we if we go to cycle renderer and then look at the material of this guy currently it should be the default diffuse BSDF we want it to be actually um, maybe slightly diffuse with a slightly emission slight emissions and then mix the two together mix shader and the color will be random you can randomize the color using either animation nodes or cycles both is a kind of a, a valid thing. So random input, it's in the object info. There's this random we can use for each object. Let's see, this one should be constant. Try a different number, red and blue. Let's check it out. There you go. That's um. That's pretty much like a Miyajima artwork, with the numbers changing. I don't know. With his LED, I think the LED can emit a different color as well. He used a. In some of his work, he used a. Just like red, green, blue. It's a basic, LED color. You can turn on the emissions like a lot brighter and then adjust the factor of this fully diffuse or fully emitted emit the light. If I'm not wrong with cycles, <coughs> actually the light shouldn't go too far, otherwise we get this noise. Uh, maybe turn off the this lower so it's kind of like dark dark room so with the gray even the gray here you can use a glossy kind of reflective but the whole room is kind of dark so
and this one this one is changing every uh, every frame random numbers changing every frame let's turn this back to diffuse just to make it a little bit faster to render so I play back of course the number is changing but the color doesn't change if this is what you want that's fine um, the cycles material actually here the color ramp can control whether you want to have more red or more green or more blue so this is like a, that the factor of the random if I'm not wrong you can just use math and okay apparently you cannot use math but maybe you can use something like you can't use multiply either because it's gonna be like fully blue or fully red the number should be between 0 and 1 <coughs> which means uh, how do we do that this is, the random comes from the object info because they are all in, the, in a different place add subtract sine cosine power minimum maximum round there must be a way to randomize this further well I think um, with the coloring thing this is one way to do it but you can also um, use the cycle uh, color per vertex um, that's uh, pretty easy to do as, as well here with a vertex color vertex color set vertex color I did this a few times already for each object we can have different uh, vertex color and the, the color itself can be random or remember our setup using color lovers yep that's um, that will work in this case combine color we're gonna use just random color goes in there it's just big um, it's gonna give like a rainbow color the hue the hue can be random and random can be from from this guy plug in there so by doing that and believe it or not all we need to do is just to plug in uh, attribute call into the emissions and the diffuse and let's update it and it didn't work let me check what's wrong with it maybe it didn't update um, so this guy is a text object that's why text object doesn't have color perfect text uh, color uh, font font have object color though but object color doesn't quite work hmm. interesting We might need to <coughs> either like a baking the bake the numbers or let me let me think real quick.
Ah, okay. I might need to break this. Uh, currently, the idea is, of course, this is a text object. Text object doesn't have, uh, unlike the mesh objects here, mesh objects can have a different uh, vertex color data. I just remember that font object doesn't have, but you can actually use some um, spare chalk to do it to do the coloring and spread chop can, can turn a uh, text objects into mesh on the fly but that might be for maybe that's for the next kind of live noting video tutorial <coughs> but you get um, the idea basically for the vertex color you need the objects to be a mesh I need, I need to convert it we don't have like a converter inside animation nodes. Um, we might. Uh, there is actually something that can turn text objects into a mesh inside animation nodes. Uh, I'll just show it to you. It's called a text object. Transform text object or something. Uh, text. Text object separate. That's the one. If you source a text in here, you can turn it into a mesh, but it can only source one object at a time. Well, so I guess that's for the for the next time with a colorize and randomize color. It's a it's an interesting case. I don't. I didn't think about this earlier but anyway I think uh, hopefully this uh, this live noting is useful for you basically we are dealing with a uh, number digit not pattern and then um, the inspiration comes from Tatsuo and Miyajima once again and how he c used color and how he really makes color um, he he makes the ar arrangement I thought that um, using a um, like a digital media using a tool like blender you can do a lot more in a, in a way but then of course this is not like physical even though you can do like uh, things like uh, instead of you can randomize the position you can put put the object in the in the grid and you can also like vector wiggles one of my favorite this is like a bonus I thought I, I was done with it, but I think okay, you can also randomize, you know, wiggle the number. Number should be free. Like that. Free floating numbers keep changing, keep moving. And number can be in different sizes, all that can be rotating scale uh, maybe randomize the scale random vector scale uh, map range plug in the value into the scale now If we want, <coughs> maybe like turn on the sampling of this guy into one in the preview. By doing that, my computer is not fast enough to do that. But <coughs> really, at this point, the number is a uh, changing in position, changing in the in the data as well as the color is not changing. But there's uh, something else. But there's a floating number. I guess this is a uh, not easy to do if you are using like a proper uh, LED. But yeah, this is kind of the experience. Um, I might 
create like a VR kind of experience using the, this kind of numbers. So if you wear your VR headsets, you have these floating numbers. Um, that will be uh, a project that I will have to try and render it out. So yeah, will be interesting what happened with the uh, with the art world and the virtual art. Um, I I think to make it more interactive and immersive in 360, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's something that kind of I want to do. I'm not so much an artist yet. Um, I guess it will happen over time. Uh, we'll see. Um, hopefully, this uh, I guess this uh, live noting is useful for you once again. Thanks again for tuning in to this Blender Switcher channel. I'll see you in the next.